Hello everybody and welcome back to our ranking of the Remnant from the Ashes bosses from easiest to hardest. If by chance you didn't see the previous video in this two-parter and are unfamiliar with the game, a tagline to catch you up to speed would be procedurally generated Dark Souls with guns, and it delivers on that concept in a big way while creating its own identity. Today I'm back to detail which bosses deliver on difficulty with the same order of magnitude. Without further ado, here are the top 10 hardest Remnant from the Ashes bosses. Number 10, Gorefist. An appropriate name because this boss is an expert at fisting new players and it isn't pretty. Like many of the evolutions of elite enemies in standard areas, Gorefist pushes the boundary slightly to make for a boss battle. For the sake of comparison, you have a 50-50 chance every playthrough that you will encounter either Shroud, who is our easiest boss, or Gorefist. That should illustrate well the disparity in difficulty here. I only faced Gorefist in my second playthrough once my build was coming together, so I can't even imagine what it's like with hardly an upgrade to your name. In contrast to Shroud who teleports to stay at range and relies on ads to generate pressure, Gorefist as a tank stuck to your ass like glue swinging a sword guts would be proud of. Dodging him isn't the hardest, just roll at the right time like anything else. That said, the arena does you no favors with its small size and many walls to corner you in. Gorefist only adds one new attack over his elite, a three-piece combo tipped off by him glowing red. And though it may be more challenging to dodge and flies through walls, it's not what lands him here. No, it's his unending waves of exploders that leave root rock clouds further limiting your ability ability to dodge Gorfist's aggressive blows. As an individual, Gorfist isn't so bad, but with the added help of his gang of explosive allies in the twisty, turny, small arena, he earns himself a spot in the top 10. Number 9, Onslaught. In an interesting twist on the Elite Evolution formula, Onslaught fuses together two tough foes, one being large axe-wielding beasts, the other small electric teleporters that can explode. Onslaught's primary form of offense is to teleport directly to you, do an AoE explosion to stun you, then strike quickly. While it is very realistic to dodge his melee strikes, I had a much harder time avoiding his AoE. And though the ads in this fight are lighter than most, the resulting stun can create the perfect clusterfuck between the AoE, the boss's attacks, and those of his accompanying mobs. The easy the way to deal with them is to back yourself in a corner, but this makes it far easier for the boss to corner you. This leaves you with no option other than to expose yourself in some way, making this fight a solid challenge no matter how you approach it. Number 8, Wrangler. In a shooter, a wide open arena can be a scary proposition. In the case of Wrangler, it takes what would be a mildly challenging boss and pushes it to the next level. When it begins, you'll be assaulted by a constant stream of spherical melee midgets, with the boss being a souped up version of these critters. He'll roll around at high speeds towards you, leap in your direction, and do a few melee swipes. His speed is nearly unrivaled, and it can be difficult to put distance between you both without any cover to break up aggro. The first half is quite easy, but at 50% HP, he evolves into a much larger and more terrifying foe. He maintains the same speed, but his damage gets an astronomical buff. Between his rolling charge, melee swipes, and lunge, he can down you in seconds if you miss even one or two dodges. Without the Rattleweed mod I picked up from Shroud to take aggro for me, and the mobs to charge it for regular use, this would have been even more difficult. Between the help of the mobs, his size making him an easy target, and his low end HP, he isn't insanely difficult. But his combination of speed, damage, and the number of adds making up for a battle that can overwhelm you in seconds makes it well deserving of a high spot on today's list. Number 7, Shatter and Shade. In terms of design, this is some of Gunfire Games' finer work. Gank bosses are always challenging to tune fairly, but Shatter and Shade do this well in a few ways. For starters, one is melee based, making it a close range fighter, while the other fires various shots at you from range. It is challenging to split your focus between them, because if you focus on one, then you either ignore the one breathing down your neck or firing at you from afar. Fortunately, once you learn their moves, you can weave between the downtime the melee boy gives you and the wind up some of the base cannon moves have. It's still plenty challenging on this basis alone, but pushes it to the next level is their shield mechanic. Periodically, they'll enter a dome where they become invulnerable, while within, you'll have to deal with a few melee slashers. They're great for keeping ammo stocked and your weapon mods charged. They really aren't the issue. No, it's the insane amount of radiation balls that are spewed out of the shield. Being irradiated isn't the concern, it's the brutal damage these shots do. Not only does it wear down your healing resources, but it makes it all too easy to die with all the adds around the corner to slice off your last sliver of HP. When you consider the longevity this adds, the potential for immense damage over time, and the difficulty of dealing with two bosses simultaneously, Shatter and Shade were an easy choice for the top 10. 
Number 6, Scald and Seer. One of these things is not like the other. Seer is a little bitch, let's get that right out of the way. You can tear through him in the first minute of the fight with minimal difficulty. That is to say this fight being a duo boss is not what lands him here. Instead, it's Scald himself. This coward runs around the winding arena very effectively keeping himself at range. No problem, you have ranged weapons too, right? Sure, but if you stand in the open and fire for even a second, you'll immediately get pierced by a bolt from his crossbow. Oh, and a single hit instantly inflicts the full burn status. Not only that, even if his bolt is a few meters from you, it'll still light you aflame. In a single fight, I caught fire over 20 times. That is absurd. His ability to make you constantly combust is way overtuned. My answer to this was to face him head on, but then you'll be subject to a volley of his bolts right to the face, which also does considerable damage. So your best bet is to stay at a moderate distance, except the fact that you'll need to stop, drop, and roll every 5 seconds, and be sure to deal with the consistently spawning ads that accompany him. This is one of the worst bosses in the game by a mile in my mind, because even though his difficulty well earns him a spot just outside the top 5, it's by no means any fun whatsoever. Number 5, Raze. Unfortunately, in terms of quality, Raze isn't lighting the world on fire either. Well, actually he is, because he will regularly spit flames in your face. In fact, that's his only direct method of doing damage. It's plenty though, because aside from the burn status, he deals it with enough frequency you'll be chugging hydro coolant for days. Outside the flames, he'll do a scream that stuns you and periodically leave the arena. He spawns a ton of flying skulls that spit on you every few seconds. While they can be a bit annoying, they're great for gathering ammo and weapon mod charge, and they also prevent rays from returning until they're all defeated, allowing you to strategically heal and reload during a safer window. The reason Raze finds himself here is how difficult it can be to down him before you run out of healing yourself. I could not find a way to realistically avoid his flames, so I instead often tank them in hopes of doing damage. But even taking advantage of his giant crit spot, I found him to be absurdly tanky. It made for an endurance battle that was hell in my first playthrough, and that's enough for me to give him the number 5 nod. Number 4, Brabus. The difficulty here boils down to two simple things. First, there are way, way, way too many ads spread throughout the arena. Most of them have range capability, so if you don't take cover, you'll have your HP chipped away constantly. The few that do melee damage are troublesome distractions that exacerbate the aforementioned issue. And second, Brabus has a shotgun, so getting close to him is a bad idea. But unfortunately, at some point, he'll get up in your face if you don't stay on the move, which is hard because of all the ads. Not to mention, you need to find windows to actually damage him to get through this hellish slog of a battle. The final nail in the difficulty coffin is him being tanky to boot. So you've got an endurance fight where you're swarmed by damage from all sides, you'll have trouble finding windows to damage the boss from afar as a result, and when he gets in close, he'll light you up with his boomstick enough to deter you from taking advantage. It's a recipe for a difficult disaster that is easily worth a spot in the top 5. Number 3, The Reanimator. The Reanimator is a weird entry. In my opinion, this isn't even a boss. The wiki considers it to be one, so I decided to include it to be thorough, but it really isn't a boss in the traditional sense. I guess if you consider stationary towers that don't fight back and summon hordes of adds that you could find in any of the standard areas throughout the world a boss, then you'll be satisfied. But truly, there's nothing gratifying about it at all. Thanks to what I assume is to make up for the boss's lack of offense, they summon an ungodly large swarm of mobs to deal with. They aren't limited to basic bits either. You'll be seeing multiple elites at the same time, making clearing the never-ending waves a doozy. This of course makes it difficult to find windows to down the towers, and that's really all there is to it. It's a difficult balance to strike that is a serious drain on your healing resources, enough to rank in the top 3, so that should speak for itself when it outclasses 25 true bosses to spike toward the top. Number 2, Dreamer and Nightmare. The final two bosses on today's list are in a league of their own in terms of challenge. I would say that none of the previous bosses are above an 8 on the difficulty scale, but for me, the Dreamer is pushing at least beyond a 9. Well, maybe not the Dreamer. He's a bit of a joke, but one that will sometimes get the last laugh. He only has a few moves, but between the ads he summons and the shitboxes shockwaves sometimes have, this portion can be a frustrating suckage on your dragon charms. Though that may not be an issue, because you'll likely want to stock up on Bloodwort for the next phase, the Nightmare. I would consider Nightmare to be more akin to a raid boss in a game such as Destiny intended for teams than something I would expect from an optionally solo experience. When the phase begins, you do paltry damage to the boss. He'll shoot fireballs at you in two waves of four each and will eventually send you into your worst nightmare, a dark hellish landscape that consistently drains HP. You can offset this through the use of blood warp, but that only lasts for 30 seconds before you need to re-up it. Time is of the essence here because you'll need to kill enemies as fast as possible to gain damage stacks. For each enemy 
enemy you kill, you get one stack. The more you have, the more damage you'll be able to do to the boss when you leave through the portal at the front. How long you stay and how many stacks you get will vary heavily on how well you manage your HP, your skill, your choice of weapons, and the mods you've plugged into them. It's best to have a weapon for clearing the basic bitches fast and aim for 10 to 15 stacks, then bail out as the elites start spawning. Thing is, you'll also need a weapon mod with high damage or a high DPS weapon with good range. This is because unless you can do enough damage to stun Nightmare within a brief period, you lose your damage stacks and do lackluster damage overall. If you can pull off the stun, he'll open up and that's when you can lay the real hurt on him. After that, the cycle repeats again. In my first playthrough, this boss was such an astounding difficulty spike compared to his peers that it caught me off guard. It didn't help that my weapon mods weren't focused on ranged damage and I had used the coach gun for my entire playthrough, which was garbage for the DPS phase on Nightmare. I eventually switched to Ruin, which was barely enough to squeak out an eventual victory. I later tried this with friends and used the Defiler's crazy high damage mod, which worked a lot better, but playing with allies brings its own share of difficulties with adds spawning in the main room and different skill levels coming into play within the realm. This boss was truly a night terror in my first playthrough and remains a moderate nightmare even today. But there's no comparison to be made, our clear winner of the title of most difficult boss in Remnant is the Undying King. If you're one of the players that despises the idea of adds in these boss battles, this will be the real nightmare. When the fight begins, you'll have four enemies to mow down from the get-go. They aren't too tough as a group, and I found bailing out to the side made for an easy way to plow through them safely. They are actually nice to generate mod charge because you're gonna need it. A few seconds after the fight begins, the king will start spawning two orbs that fire shots at you. These do a surprisingly high amount of damage, so you'll want to deal with them quickly. Since there are two of them though, this is more difficult than you might think. Not only that, but he keeps spawning more and does so quickly. This makes it quite easy to get overwhelmed before even 30 seconds has passed. After spawning a few pairs, the king will start spawning more ranged adds from the side of the arena. Meanwhile, he gets tired of letting everything do the fighting for him, takes up arms and starts walking towards you in an unsettlingly slow speed. That is until he gets close enough to unleash his inner R1 spammer and starts demolishing you with some of the hardest hits of any boss. His flurries are so fast that it's nearly impossible to dodge them all, meaning you're likely to lose at least 25% of your HP. But don't forget, this is all happening while there may be orb shooting at you from the sky and adds shooting at you on the ground. The best strategy is to run from the king so he can't hit you, but then you run into everything else and it just keeps spawning. If you survive long enough, the king will grow tired of whooping your ass and decides to take a rest. But as he does, he slowly starts gaining back HP, which requires you to stun him out of it. But not so fast, you'll have to deal with waves of slasher mobs by the dozen beforehand, otherwise you'll subject yourself to even more pandemonium. There is a silver lining though. This is a great time to get mod charge, ammo, and heal. It may seem like you need to stun the king quickly, but you actually get a sizable opportunity to light him up after you stun him out. As as long as you aren't operating at a snail's pace, he'll likely lose far more HP than he had when he started healing. After that, you rinse and repeat until he's dead. Or is he? Nope, the name isn't for show, the king rises from the dead and gains back half of his health bar, making this merry-go-round of ass blasting continue for even longer. When it boils down to it, this fight has more going on than any other in the game, making it a near guarantee you'll take hefty damage. And it's one of, if not the longest battles in the game. When you mix that in with all the chaos and resulting damage, it's no wonder I'm crowning him the king of difficulty and remnant. But of course, that's just my opinion. I saw the comments of the previous video that many of you had different experiences from me, so I'd love for you to share with us your top 10 hardest bosses in the comments. Be sure to subscribe for a lot more boss rankings on the horizon and the continuation of the top 100 in the coming weeks. I want to thank you all for watching today, much love to you, and I'll see you in the next video.